Shabbat Shalom Remnant. Shabbat Shalom to the elect, to the called and the chosen and of the return. But near and afar, giving all praises to the Most High Yahweh El Elyon in the heavens, our Father, and to Yah Yahushua, our brother, our high priest, after the order of Malkisadi in the heavens, before the altar, making a daily sacrifice for our sins as we make a daily sacrifice and as we die daily, and to the Malak Yahweh, the angel of Yahweh also Yahweh, known as the Holy Spirit. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh to the three of them as one. Shalom. All right, so this is part two. I'm going back in, so I'm going to have to split this up, um, put it in in a certain kind of way to make it make sense. Okay, so this is a continuation of the armor of Yah Yahushua from 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. I'm going to repeat from part one. Our weapons, as I'm going into Ephesians and breaking that down, I'm going back in and we're going to break down vocabulary a little more, right? Our weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not anything physical in this world. Our weapons are not tangible to the touch to the physical world made out of anything, but mighty through Elohim. Whatever our weapons are, it's through him to the pulling down of strongholds. We need to get some understanding. As I said, again, Yah talks about, which I'm going to go and read, Jeremiah, that the deliverance of the children of light that the world is waiting for us to rise. The woman that is fleeing is supposed to give birth to salvation. She's supposed to birth a man child. But from the templates of David on and all the king warriors and the king and the warrior priests from the Maccabees on, we have this ideology that the kingdom is going to be taken by war because we see Yahoshua being the mighty warrior saying he's coming down with legions, tens and 12 legions of his angels to fight. But if he has 12 legions of angels and a host and a myriad of angels to come down and fight this war, and we need Mikael in the last day to fight for us because we have no, we're gonna be, we gonna be taken by the beast. He doesn't need us to physically fight anything. But we, must be mighty through him. So to be mighty through him, that means he has to be dwelling with us and us with him through Yahushua. And the only way to do that is to walk with our garments of righteousness so that we don't be found naked when he comes, defenseless. The kingdom would not be, will not be taken by violence, y'all. Point blank. The kingdom will not be taken by violence. Can a man, and when he says a man, he is not, it's, the word is not ish, the word is geber, gabar, a strong man, a valiant man, a warrior, give birth. Why is the house of Israel a woman? Because he's the seed that must be spread into every woman, the seven assemblies. And we must birth him inside of us. Can a man give birth? No, y'all. So the deliverance of Israel, I remember somebody said, I said blasphemy, I said a woman is gonna deliver Israel. Yeah, it's going to be the spirit of the fem female, not the feminine, the spirit of the female, the female spirit that is in us as Israel has to take place in us in order to birth salvation. And our knuckle-headed, the warrior, arrogant, no understanding the art of war, reading the world's books of how to wage war, 
is taking Satan's knowledge, trying to fight Satan with Satan, with his defenses and his weapons. And so they always gonna put this picture up. And I said, again, this is not the picture. This is not the foreshadow of what he's telling us, right? Ephesians 6. So I went over this, but I'm going to go over it again. Finally, be strong in Yahweh and in the strength of his might. What's that? What's his might? That's Yahushua. So we have to be strong in Yahweh, who is the head, and Yahushua, who was made the head. Now, put on the whole armor or all of the weapons of Elohim. Well, what are the weapons of Elohim? That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Well, we need to understand who are we fighting? It says the devil and his schemes. For our wrestling or our war is not against flesh and blood. What is he saying when he says our war is not against flesh and blood? What is he trying to get us to understand here? The spirit realm. That killing a man doesn't win the war. Killing anybody, smiting anybody does not win your war at all. Because you can't kill a spirit. You don't have the power to kill any spirit except your own. What gain is the world if he can conquer the whole, what gain if a man, he can conquer the whole world, that means through all, and he can't do what? Conquer his own soul. That's the war. You can kill a man, and whatever spirit has possessed that man to attack you, to do any harm to you, will jump off of him and find another host. And you'll always be slicing and dicing, right? Until you realize that you got to put an armor on that you can't be touched at all, right? What are we fighting against? So it says, we fight, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, we do wrestle against our own flesh and blood. So people look at that and think that, right, that we don't, no, no, no. The flesh, we must fight even unto blood. We must resist sin unto blood. But killing somebody is saying, that we don't have to harm anybody. We don't have to kill nobody, fight nobody, war against nobody, pick up arms against nobody, strike nobody. That is not the fight. That's not the fight. But against principalities, the word in Greek is achas, and against powers, exousias, and against cosmic powers, cosmokratos. Of the darkness of this world and against spiritual forces, pneumatica, of wickedness or iniquity in heavenly places, iparanois. I'm trying to put some accent on it, right? I put something on it. I've been, I've been there. I hear it, right? But my, you know, after four syllables, I'm like. <laughs> Right, so let's let's break down these words because we've been reading this the whole time in Christianity, right? And 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 they don't seem to have a sense of what the spiritual world is, right? But they super duper spiritual though. At the end of the day, they have no clue what we fight against. You tell them somebody got a demon, and be like, no, <laughs> somebody's possessed, no, mental health, <laughs> take the medication. Somebody's sick, no sin, medication, go to the doctors, go to this. They seem to have no understanding what we fight against. All right. 10. Finally, be strong in Yahweh, right? And in the strength of his might, that's Yahushua. Put on the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Let's look at this word schemes. Sometimes it says wiles. What does yours say? The wiles. What does a while to mean to you? That don't mean nothing. They just read that. 
schemes of the devil, schemes of the, what's the schemes and the wiles of the devil, right? The word is methodeia, craft or deceit, right? A craft or deceit, usage, watch this, a way of searching after something. What'd that bring to mind? Huh? Yeah. A way of searching after something. What that bring to mind? An inquiry, a method, scheming, craftiness, deceit. A way of searching after somebody is what? Through the media, through the phones, through the AEROUs, through the Google, through the Facebook, uh, through the MySpaces, through the uh, Twitters, um, through the cameras, through the World Wide Web. Right? Y'all said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Be wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Right? 3180, methodia, the root of the English term method, a method, properly a predictable preset method used in organized evil doing, well crafted trickery. Well, what method would this be that Satan has? What craft does he have? that he could search and inquire of us, preset beforehand, predict us. From 3180 Methodia come from methodos, a way of searching after something and inquiry and method, scheming craftiness, right? One, to follow up or investigate by method and settled plan. Your credit cards, your passports, everything right? To follow craftsfully, it means we're being followed. Frame devices. Now I make this up, go look. What's a frame device? The very thing that I'm on right now. To deceive. Okay, that just, that just opened up the whole ideology of what the scheme is of the Satan in the last day. In the last day. But yet we on this. We on the phones. We on the computers. We use our credit cards. We got our visas. Everything is boop, 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 boop. Smart watches. They can read you. They can read your heart rate. They can read your blood. They can read your sugar level. They can read your emotions. They can read your eye pattern. They can read what you're reading. They can smell what you smell in, right? Because it's all a, a reaction going on in the body. It's reading you. It can predict, right? Through a method of watching you and, and, and profiling you, your next move to know what you're thinking, what you're going to do based upon past behavior, right? All of that. Can't escape it, right? Even here, we can't walk out the door. They know when we're coming in, they know when we're going out. Facial recognition, thumb, thumb scans, hand scans, eye scans, your DNA, your saliva. Okay, let me read that again. Because whatever this is, we got to be prepared to be able to fight against this for the last day, y'all. He said for that, that last day, that evil day. He's talking about the end of time, right? Once again. Schemes, methodia, the root of the English term method properly, a predictable preset method used in organized evil doing. Usage, a way of searching after something, an inquiry, a method of scheming, craftiness, and deceit. To follow up or investigate by method and a settled plan is set to follow craftfully frame devices and deceive. All right. So when I start talking about the spiritual realm, but then we read what the schemes are, what the devices are of the devil, but we talk about the spiritual world, people can't see it. People can't see it. I want, I want y'all to explain to me how we get Wi-Fi. It's in the air. 
It's an unseen force. How we get TV? How y'all watching me right now through a plasma screen? How can I go live and as I'm talking, you can hear me across the world? Unseen forces. How is it that you could take a chip and boop and know what I'm spending, what I'm buying? How is it that I could wear a watch or have a bracelet or, or, or a magnet or something, whatever in these devices, and it can read me and know what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking and how my eyes are moving to see where I stopped and what I looked at. Three seconds of force, right? To know what you're watching on the screen. It knows, y'all. How? How does the telephone work? How does electricity work? How does magnetism work? How does it all work? In the unseen world, through the spiritual world. Let's get some understanding here. What are we fighting against? They'll give us the aliens, right? Okay, we'll go with the aliens, but every alien phenomena that you see, you see that they, even though they're working through the unseen world, something that they, they always got a manifestation of something physical that they use, a want, a tool, a ship. They, or even they got, as they telling us, an outer body that can help them see through the walls and walk through, right? They got some, something physical. Now we didn't know what these uh, elements were until we discovered it through them certain kinds of titaniums and metals that we didn't have no clue about that existed in this world that they've been able to tap into that can harness the spiritual world. What are we fighting against? No, I don't say aliens, y'all. But what I do say is that they can shift. They can come and manifest in this spiritual, spiritual world and they can harness the physical world to appear. And they can use devices. The devil is using devices to harness his power or harness the power of the spiritual world to fight against us. In the Hebrew, and I know there's more than one version of the Hebrew, right? It says, Sof devar, the final thing. Echai, echai, chazaku, right? How that you will be strong in Yahweh, where Be'az in strength, Giburato, and in his might and his greatness. The word here is after this, dress in the weapons of Elohim. This is how the Hebrew, Libshu from Lilabesh. Dress, put on the clothing of clean neshik, clean neshik, clean neshik. So the word neshik, you know what the word neshik means in Hebrew? All right, the word clean means an instrument, instrument or tool. Neshik comes from the word nashak, which means to bite, uh, to kiss, or to bite, right? So that's basically when you give somebody a kiss, it's a neshik. But it be a kiss of death, right? So it mean it, it, it can be a bite too, right? It can be a kiss of death. Somehow it's what a, it's like a snake bite, basically. A snake kiss. How about that? Your weapons of a snake, of a bite, right? But it translates clean neshik, weapons of Elohim, lemaan to the end, to clue that you will be able to. Of um, Amod, Amad, to stand naked against Nekli, the instruments and the tools of Hasatan, of the adversary. He got tools, y'all. And I keep saying that those that are walking in the spirit of Yahweh, that understood and walked with the sure stone, Yahoshua as their sure stone didn't pick up weapons. They never fought against a sword or a gun. Clean tools, instruments. The full arm of early 12, for our warfare is not against flesh 
human origin and blood, but against the principalities, I read that, archaeus, against the powers, exousias, and against the cosmic powers, cosmocratoras, in the darkness of this world or age, and against the evil spirits, um, numactica, in the high places, right? In the Hebrew, it reads like this. Kilo im basav, not with flesh, meat, vadam, wadam, blood, milchama, is the war, lanu, of us. Kiim for if, for with, sarim. They're using the word sarim. I don't really like the word sarim. I know that there's another word that is actually used in the Hebrew, but they're using the word sarim. This is the only version I can find. Ve shalitim. Im hamashlim, right? We're going to get to these words. Bekeshkat, right? From Koshek, in the darkness, haolam, of this world. Well, when you go back to Genesis, right? He said, and uh, there was darkness on the face of the deep, Koshek. But when I told you that Genesis was really about us, John 1 and 1 tells you what that means that the darkness was the mind and the heart of men that was on the face of the deep, the abyss. That was us in our lowest state, mankind, a mankind, right? Hazeim harukot haraot, spirits, ruchot, from ruach, evil spirits, ra'ah, harukot haraot, asher amerumim, in the high places. Our own height, right? This doesn't say heavens. This says in the high places above. Okay, all right. Let's go and go. Let's go through these words. So we have the word principalities as archas, and they use the word sarim. I said that word sarim is not really efficient. It's not an efficient uh, Hebrew version of that word. And whatever the word archas is coming from, they got it from Hebrew. So I know that this translation is a secondary translation, but we're gonna to get to the right word. And the powers, exousias, they use shalatim, which means rulers or sovereign. And the cosmic world rulers or powers, right? And they use the word ha mashlim, but the word mashlim comes from the word mashal, which means parables, right? So someone that speaks in dark sayings speaks in a way that's not for you to understand. That could be legislation. You understand what I'm saying? Legal legislation against you of, the, of this world or age and darkness. Spiritual forces or hosts, and the word is habuchot araot, of wickedness in the heavenly places. Okay, let's go into these words. It'll help us to understand. People just read this and just be like, I'm spiritual. Got the arm of Yah. And they still don't know what they're fighting against. Principalities, Archas. They use the word Sarim, Arche, which means beginning, origin, principalities, elementary, rulers, chief, and first. In the Septuagint, the most equivalent to this word is rosh or roshit. You could use the word tehila, like lehatchil, to start, but I know that the word is really coming from the rosh or roshit, as in chief or principality. In the beginning, in berashit, in principle, in chief in the first place, right? In origin. Beginning is sort of not correct when you translate Rashid, right? That would mean head. It comes from the word head, chief. Beginning or origin of something. The person or thing that commences, the first person or thing in a series, the leader, we're gonna break the, we're gonna find out who these things, what these principalities are, right? The leader, the first of a thing. That by which anything begins to be, 
the origin or the active cause, the extremity of a thing, of the corners of a sail. Five, the first place, principality, the rule or magistrate, authorities, as in these scriptures, often given in charge. Hence, the term is transferred by Paul to angels and demons holding dominions entrusted to them in the order of things. Well, we're going we're gonna to get into the story. We're going to break this down. Who and what are we talking about? Okay? Keep that in mind. We war against principalities. And the best word in Hebrew to describe a principality or chief is rosh. Roshi, the head, the first of something. And Paul reckons it to angels and demons holding a dominion entrusted, given to them in the order of things. Okay. The second word that they say we were against is powers. They use the word shalitim, rulers or sovereign. I would say that I don't really like that word. I would use the word elite. I know that there's another Hebrew translation that the word would be elim. Elim comes from the word strong ones. Elim or as an oak. Your oaks, you worship the oaks. Thus, that's your strong man, your powers. So it can be a man, right? It could be a man that you have put as a leader before you, as a strong man before you, as a power but the word elim will open it up, not to just a man, but to higher forces, right? Well, that would sound like a strong man, right? Strong man. Um, where we, this word for the Septuagint is using the word mem shalah, mem shalah, from mashal, mem shalah, like in rosh mem shalah. Rosh is the principality, rosh mem shalah, in Hebrew means the president. So this is why they're using the word memshalah, right? Um, as in mashal, those that delegate. They make laws against you, right? Hidden laws, their speeches against you. Shalti, shaltan of saltan, another word for power. So one, this is how the word is being used. Power of choice, liberty of doing as one pleases. What that sound like? Leave or what's this sound like? Democracy. But in democracy, it says it has horns like a lamb, but it really speaks like a dragon. The power of authority, influence. It's a trick of right laws that give you permissions against yourself. Le uh, delegated authorities, the power of rule or government, the power of him who will and command must be submitted to by others and obeyed. Generally translated authority. A, universally power over one so as to be able to subdue, drive out, destroy, or to hold submissive to one's will, the power to inflict plagues and put an end to them. Y'all can see where this is going, right? Like y'all, I didn't make up these definitions, like, like right there, right? Um, of course, I didn't copy and paste everything, all of that other stuff, but go check it out. You can see I'm using how they're using it, one, two, three. I might've skipped one or two. That's way off the mark of how it's not being used. But this is what the word means from the Greek perspective and also the Septuagint. Also, for the power of rule or government, be spe um, specifically the power of judicial decision, the power of deciding against one, of authority to manage domestic affairs. C, 
metonymically, I don't know if I'm right, saying that right, that's like five syllables, a thing subject to authority or rule. One who possesses authority, authority, dignitaries, a ruler, a human magistrate, the leading and more powerful among created beings superior to man, spiritual potent, potentates used in the plural of a certain class of angels, used also of demons in the plural. So though we can see we got legislation, right? Through powers, you might call them mayors, governors, senators, presidents, uh, whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that their laws, they're not making them up. They're getting them from a higher force. Okay, we can say they're getting them from the demons and, and they're getting them from the aliens. They talking to the aliens in the other undercover bunker on the 55th floor underneath the right. And they're going down and say, what should we do next? This is what you do. The legislation is not coming from man. They're influenced by the most certainly. They're demonic and some of them may be their children, but the legisl legislation is coming from a class of angels used also of demons in the plural, right? All, it's all in the spiritual world, but they do have an influence in our minds, right? So like I said, you can kill one president, right? That's why we got to the point where you could, you could we had rulers, right? And they thought that they was the incarnation, but once one die, another one comes up. A one senator dies, another senator comes in and the policies have never changed, y'all. From one man to the next, is it the man? No. The cosmic world, rulers, powers, or forces. They use the word hamashlim, right? And this word is mashal, as in parable, also legislation. Usage, ruler of this world. That is, of the world of asserting its independence of Elohim. Well, it's the same thing, y'all, right? Democracy, the dragon, used of the angelic or demonic powers controlling the subliminary world, the power of suggestion. World, kratio, to rule properly, world ruler, referring to Satan and his demons, influencing the lives of worldly people. How are they doing that, y'all? How they doing that? No. No, the other first one was legislation, right? So this word is mashal. It says parables, like dark sayings. So that means that something is being said, but you really don't understand what you received it. What's, wh where we get that from? What's this cosmic power of suggestion, huh? It's through music, it's through TV, it's through all forms of media. Mm-hmm. The power of suggestion influencing you, teaching you. All of this is about teaching you another knowledge at the end of the day against yourselves, right? Some of, it is, some of it is enforced. Some of it is influenced. Some of it is subliminal, hidden. That's why I use the word um, mushlam, uh, mushlim, like from mashal, a hidden and dark parable. Like it's not clear what it's really saying to you, what you're receiving from it, you're not sure. The Lord of the world, right? Prince of this age. We know who that's referring to. The devil and the demons are called in plural. The world rulers of this darkness. The world, the word occurs in the Orphica writing of Satan in rabbinical writings. Um, they're using this word. I don't know what it is. Kazmukrator. Kaz, Kazmukrator. Don't know what that is is used both of human rulers and of angels of death. Okay. Spiritual forces, a host. Fnumaktika. Harukot haraot. Wickedness. Of wickedness and iniquity in heavenly places, right? This word simply means the spirit world, spiritual. Evil spirits. 4152, 
an adjective derived from 151, pneuma, which means spirit, spiritual, relating to the realm of spirit, i.e. the invisible sphere in which the Holy Spirit imparts faith, reveals Messiah. So we know that Yahushua and his Holy Spirit also works with the same realm. But whatever it is that the Holy Spirit, Yahushua and his word is supposed to do to us spiritually, Satan is mimicking that through the same realm. He's using the same science. The spiritual realm go, has laws to it. And Satan and his ministers have to work through the same laws. However, Yah is doing what he needs to do to get into our minds and our hearts and souls. Satan is reversing that, doing the same thing to give another word, another influence, another thought into your spirit, mind, and soul. Relating to the human spirit or rational soul as the part of man, which is akin to Elohim and serves as his instrument or organ, opposed to, hence that which possesses the nature of the rational soul. So these evil spirits are here to get you to go against your rational soul, go crazy right? To go against serving Yah. They're here to convince you to do everything Yah said not to do inside, in your spirit. Um, opposed to the body, which is animated and controlled only by the rational soul and by means of which the rational life of life of the spirit is lived or opposed to. So what we do in the physical world is controlled by our souls. What's in our souls, which really is what's, is what's in our heart, right? Two, belonging to a spirit or being higher than man, but inferior to Elohim, i.e. spiritual beings or power, spiritual hosts, wicked spirits. Three, belonging to the divine spirit, that would be the Holy Spirit and reference to things emanating from the divine spirit or inhibiting its effect. And so it's character. So whatever it is, is influencing your character. We're supposed to take on the name of Yah. And that is to walk in his character. This, whatever this is, these schemes, devices that they use is influencing our, or in, affecting our character. Thoughts, how you think. Opinions, how you feel, precepts, what you keep saying to yourself to justify yourself. Precept is a witness, a word of witness to something you're thinking. What you keep using as evidence to justify your thoughts and opinions. Maxines, I'm not sure what that means. Is that some kind of uh, proxy law? What is a maxine? Anybody can look it up real quick. Maxines, ascribable, huh? Sorry? Oh, okay, all right. Ascribable to the Holy Spirit working in the soul. So that's what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do. Then these wicked spirits are there to undo that. How they been doing it? Well, I've been teaching it the whole time. How they been doing it? And so when they are making delegations, when they are creating devices, they have figured out, they know Torah. Satan and his ministers know Torah better than you because everything that y'all told us to or not to do was to protect us from this. Guard your gates and your soul and your mind. In heavenly places, a man will mean usage, heavenly celestial, in the heavenly sphere, the sphere of spiritual activities, meet divine spiritual everybody think all the way up there in space how about right here right here in space or how about right here in space if we had the proper tool to see the magnetic web of spiritual forces flowing across our minds throughout through i mean we in a web of spiritual warfare we don't even know it Y'all would be scared if y'all saw the spiritual world. Y'all would be absolutely scared to see all the spiritual activity taking place. 
I say again, does man think by himself? Man is a receiver. We are receptor. Nobody coming up with their own thought. Ain't nobody smart by themselves. That's why I say try every spirit. Ain't nobody smart by themselves. You see these uh these 12 year old kids that's uh, graduating from, 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 from Harvard University at that age. No, that's a spiritual influence. Something to open up that mind, that child's mind. Something influence that child's mind to open up to receive and proceed faster and quicker and stronger than normal man. Y'all might say that's a good thing, but not if he's receiving from demonic spirits. Not if his knowledge is coming from the evil forces. Not if his ideas and opinions is being influenced by Satan. You got people that talk about they don't went to the third and fourth and fifth heaven. They don't went to the throne. Of Ain't no man went up into the heaven and stood in the throne of Yah. Y'all, that's a lie. If I ever heard one, Enoch didn't even get there. You got people on this earth. They went up to the heavens and came back down. Well, what did they see? Which heaven? They always talk about an angel visited them, but if it wasn't the Holy Spirit, what angel? Because they look like light too. Giving them knowledge, influencing their mind, giving them a quick, sharp speech, quick tongue. Giving them ideas, right? From 2032. An adjective derived from on fitting, which intensifies 3772 Aronas, heaven, properly heavenly, referring to the impact of heaven's influence on a particular situation or purpose. Person, sorry. Properly existing in, in, or above heaven or heavenly. Existing in heaven, the heavenly beings, the inhabitations of heaven, Elohim, of angels in opposition to the bodies of the stars as well. Well, what's the bodies of the stars? Huh? Oh, y'all would just say spirits. Okay, the bodies of the stars, right? The stars, right? Y'all, that's astronomy. But no, there are angels that are over them. The bodies of the stars, what is a star? What's the body of a star? It's made of glory. There are a glory of a star, a glory of the moon, a glory of the sun, of celestial. What is the body of a star? Let's get to this. Huh? Light. What creates the light? Huh? Well, it's fire. It's all types of fire. What creates the light and the fire? Magnetic rays, uh, fusion, infusion, um, certain gases and compression, right? Nuclear fusion, protons and nu um, electric, electric fusion, magnetic, all of this kind of stuff, right? That's the body of the stars. But they've been able to do that down here, y'all. The different get rays and magnetic rays and beams of light and taking gases and compressing them and creating stars. Well, what do you, how do you think the phone works, y'all? <laughs> how y'all think the computer, how you think the TV works, y'all? How do you think you get your electricity? How do you think? No, they have inhabited, they have harnessed it, the power of heaven in the stars on earth. All our technology is, is, a, is a knowledge from heaven that was never meant to be manifested like that on earth. Nuclear plants, nuclear radiation, when you get the phone, what's coming out of it, y'all? Radiation. What is creating all this radiation? Stuff that ain't, ain't supposed to be messing with for power for heat, for light, for fire. The bodies of stars, which the apostle, according to the universal ancient conception, seems to have regarded as 
animate, A, the thing that takes place in heaven. The thing that takes place in heaven is fusion. The heavenly regions, i.e. heaven itself, the abode of Elohim and angels, the lower heavens or the heavens of the clouds. What's in the cloud? <laughs> yeah. What's in the cloud? The A-E-I-O-U's. Yes. That's, yeah, that's the cloud right now. That's what's in the clouds. That's spiritual. The cloud mind. The heavenly temple or sanctuary. Where's that? What's the heavenly temple or sanctuary? Right here. Right here. Well, where the cloud? Well, so this cloud, this, this, the spirits that's aboding, the spiritual forces that's aboding in high places, in heavenly places, is in the cloud. Is in the heavens. And is in here. How they getting there? Through all these, <laughs> through the cloud, <laughs> right? What they, well, they're connecting us. Of heavenly origin or nature. All right. So, 13, therefore, put on the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to stand, withstand the evil day. That evil day has not come yet, y'all. It's coming. And having done all to stand. All right. So we're going to do some reading. Let's get to the origin of this. Like Ephesians didn't just pull these words out of nowhere. Right? These things is known. What are these things? Now I say again that today they call them aliens. Okay. Uh, we know there's like they they done um, revealed to us what six races of aliens and some reptilians and one group of aliens came down first to warn us about the other aliens that's coming and and all this technology, all of this technology bust open after what the so-called aliens fell in their spaceships, physical ships, y'all, and they did reverse reverse um. Um, help me out, reverse engineering or all these things and or they caught one alive. They, they speak it to him and is teaching him, right? Reverse aerodynamics, re engineering, all this stuff, all that we got y'all, the radio, the TV, the telephone, the virtual reality, all that we got happened after these so-called aliens came down in their devices. Huh? All, I mean, come on now. And there's different ones of them giving us different knowledges. Now, what they doing now is not new. They was doing it before. Now those worlds was ruined and all we see is bricks. And so you think that they live some third world type of life way back in the ancient world three, four, five, six thousand years ago. And I tell you again that the science says that they had these devices back then. That's right. These devices that we got are not new, y'all. They were here before. Y'all destroyed the world and they and destroyed them. And now they're coming back. But they need the labor of man to create the devices to bring them back in effect, to do their bidding, to serve them, to do it all over again, to build their world that they built the first time and that y'all destroyed two times over actually. All right, let's read Enoch. Let's find out what the principalities, the evil spirits, the rulers in high places or in dark places of this world, of this age started from. What are we talking about? Enoch chapter one, verse one. There was a wise man, a great artificer, and Yahweh conceived the love for him and received him that he should behold the uppermost dwelling and be an eyewitness of the wise and great and inconceivable and immutable realm of Elohim, meaning is unexplainable. And you can't perceive it, even though he's gonna give it to us in words, you cannot perceive it with the four dimensions of your mind 
and you can't, there's no words to describe what he's going to see him, show him. He's going to do his best. The realm of Elohim, the almighty, of the very wonderful and glorious and bright and many-eyed stations of Yahweh's servant and of the inaccessible throne of Yahweh. Nobody went to the throne of Yah except Yahushua. Yeah, this Eshkadar talking about he went to the throne and stood before the throne of the Most High El Elyon. Yo, kill him now. Strike him. Enoch didn't even go there. And of the degrees, levels, and manifestations, right? The, the levels of the manifestations of the incorporeal host and of the ineffable ministration of the multitude of the elements. What are we talking about here? Elements. So when y'all says in the end that I'm going to destroy the heavens and the earth this time, he said even the elements are going to melt. Why? Because that's what they use. That's what they're using to uh, hoist or hold or um, harness. I'm sorry. Yes. Harnessed the powers. And of the various apparition and inexpressible singing of the host of the Caribbeans and of the boundless light. Ain't no song we can sing on this earth that sound that beautiful. We trying though, right? And that time, he said, when my 165th year was completed, I begat my son Mathusal or Methuselah. After this too, I lived 200 years and completed of all the years of my life, 365 years. Of the first day of the month, I was in my house alone and I was resting on my bed and slept. And when I was asleep, great distress came upon me into my heart and I was weeping with my eyes in sleep. And I could not understand what distress was, what this distress was or what would happen to me. And there appeared to me two men, exceedingly big, was these men? What that sound like? Angels, like, like Nephilim, huh? like big men, right? So that I never saw such on earth. Their faces were shining like the sun. Their eyes too were like a burning light. And from their lips was fire coming forth, clothing and singing of various kinds in appearance of purple. Their wings were brighter than gold, their hands whiter than snow. We, you can draw this all day long. Whatever we draw, it's not what he saw. He said, I can't explain it, but I'm trying, right? There's, they were standing at the head of my bed and began to call me by my name. And I arose from my sleep and saw clearly these two men standing in front of me. And I saluted them and was seized with fear. And the appearance of my face was changed from terror. And those men said to me, have courage and not, do not fear. The eternal Elohim sent us to you and lo, you shall today ascend with us into heaven and you shall tell your sons and all your household, all that they shall do without you on the earth in your house and let no one seek you till Yahweh return you to them. And I made haste to obey them and went out from my house and made the doors. And it was ordered me and summoned my sons, Methuselah and Ragim and Gadad, and made known to them all the marvels of those men had told me. Chapter two, listen to me, my children. I know not whether I go or what will befall me, befall me. Now, therefore, my children, I tell you, turn not from Elohim before the face of the vain who made not heaven and earth. For these shall perish and those who worship them and many and may Yahweh make confident your heart in the fear of Elohim. And now, my children, let no one think to seek me until Yahweh return me to you. Chapter three, it came to pass when Enoch had told his sons that the angels took him on their wings and bore him up on the first heaven. So when he took him to heaven, was there one heaven? The Bible confirms that there's heavens upon heavens and there's many mansions in my father's house. Can heaven contain him? Absolutely not. Whatever the ultimate unapproachable light above the throne of Yahweh in the heavens of heavens is not heaven, y'all. It's above that, uncomprehensible, unapproachable. 
But he took them to the first heaven and placed them on the clouds. And there I looked, and again, and I looked higher and saw the ether. What's the ether, y'all? Huh? Ether? Gases, a type of gas that has an electrical static. Well, what does the internet work through? The ether. Go look up what ether is. It's an element, y'all. Right off the top of my head, I can't tell you. It's like hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen to the something degree, you know, <laughs> ether. But that's, but, but fire works through the ether, y'all. And electrical current works through the ether. And they placed me on the first heaven and showed me a very great sea, greater than the earthly sea. It's a sea of water in the ether. Because electric electricity also flows through water. It's called a cloud. All right. They brought me before my face, the elders and rulers of the stellar orders. So we got elders and rulers now of the stellar orders. And showed me 200 angels. We know I'm going to read the whole story. 200 angels who rule the stars and their services, services to the heavens and fly with their wings and come round all those who sail. And here I looked down and saw the treasure houses of snow and the angels who kept their terrible storehouse. So there's an angel that's over snow, y'all. But we found out that they learn, learn how to create snow. How they learn that? The elders and the rulers of the stellar orders, the eight of the heavens, that's the uh that's nuclear and atomic power. This is this is how well, I, I'm losing all my words, y'all, right? Uh fusion to make stars on earth. How did we learn that? And the clouds whence they came out and into which they go. How did we learn how to make clouds? They over here making clouds, y'all. We know this, right? Through technology, through devices. They can change the weather in the first heaven. They showed me the treasure house of dew, like oil of the olive, and the appearance of its form and all of the flowers of the earth. Further, many angels guarding the treasure houses of these things and how they are made to shut and open. I'm in 2 Enoch chapter 7. I'm skipping some things. Those men picked me up and brought me to the second heaven. And they showed me and I saw the darkness greater than the earthly darkness. What? So there was darkness on the earth, y'all, when Satan came down and on the deep. But he went to the second heaven and saw a greater darkness in the second heaven, worse than was on earth. And there I perceived prisoners under guard. So there's prisoners under guard in the second heaven. Well, maybe they can't come down, but maybe we can go up. Let's see. Hanging up, waiting for the measureless judgment. And those angels spirits have the appearance of darkness itself more than earthly darkness. So it said the spirits that roam in the high places in this world's darkness and unceasingly they made weeping all day long. And I said to the men who were with me, who are these ones being tormented unceasingly? Those men answer me. These are those who have turned away from Yahweh who did not obey the Yahweh's command but of their own will plotted together and turned away with their prince. Who's the prince? And with those who were under restraint in the fifth heaven. So you mean we have a rebellion of a, of a, of a, of a ruler, a prince. And angels in the fifth, in the second heaven, 200, am I correct? And an order under them, so it probably, who knows how many thousands, an order under them from the fifth heaven in rebellion. And I felt very sorry for them and those angel spirits 
bowed down to me and said to me, man of Elohim, pray for us to Yahweh. And I answered them and said, who am I, a mortal man, that I should pray for angels or spirits? Who knows where I am going and what will confront me? Or who indeed will pray for me? And those men took me up on their wings and placed me in the fifth heaven. And I saw there many innumerable armies called Gregory. That sounds, that sounds demonic. How about an egregore? Egregore. That's what it is. Innumerable armies, y'all. We're talking about millions of hosts in the fifth heaven that rebelled called Gregory. And their appearance was like the appearance of human beings and their sizes was larger than that of large giants. So they were bigger than the Nephilim that were on the earth. And their faces were dejected and the silence of their mouths were perpetual. And there was no liturgy in the fifth heaven. And I said to these men who were with me, what is the explanation of those ones are so very dejected and their faces miserable, okay, sunken in, right? Miserable and their mouths silent. And why is there no liturgy in this heaven? Why is there no word of Elohim going forth in this heaven? And those men answered me, these are the Gregory who turned aside from Yahweh. 200 myriads. Okay, what's 200 myriads? How about 200 millions, millions? So a myriad could be anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000, even to a million. It's like tens upon tens upon tens. Well, what's that army in the end? 200 million? Or is it 200,000? 200 million. Mm. Together with their prince, Satanian. And similar to them are those who went down as prisoners in their train who are in the second heaven. So we got a rebellion from the second to the fifth heaven. And some, okay, I read that. Imprisoned in great darkness. And three of them descended to the earth from Yahweh's throne onto the place of Erman. And they broke the promise on the shoulder of Mount Erman. And they saw the daughters of men, how beautiful they were. And they took wives for themselves and the earth was defiled by their deeds who and the wives of men created great evil in the entire time of this age, acted lawlessly and practiced misogynation, misogynation and gave birth to giants and great monsters and great enmity. So when they created this great evil, they came down, took wives and created great evil the entire time of that age during the time of Noah. They acted lawlessly, so there had to be a law in place that they rebelled against when they came down to the earthly realm. They practiced misogynation. Come on, tell me what misogynation is. The practice of interbreeding and intermarriage or sex with different races of people. Therefore, so that they hate women because they came out of women, right? It was almost like a curse to be born of them that these women are birthing today, right? That's, that's little demons, right? They practiced misogynation and gave birth to giants and great monsters, right? And great enmity. So if they great gave birth to monsters, it wasn't just the humans that they was what? Doing stuff to, it was animals too. Bestiality. But yet these are spirit beings, y'all, that have another DNA. And that is why Elohim has judged them with great judgment and they mourn their brothers. And they will be outra outrageous on the great day of Yahweh. Their judgment hasn't come. Can't nobody kill a spirit. Yahushua didn't kill no, no spirit. He just, he just bound them or removed them. I'm in Enoch 18. And I said to the Gregory, I have seen your brothers and their deeds and their torments and their great prayers. And I have prayed for them, but Yahweh has sentenced them under the earth until heaven and earth are indeed forever. 
So these ones were sentenced underneath the earth, but the ones in the second heaven are still there as there are those that are still in the fifth heaven still rebelling. Because even after the judgment of this and he destroyed the earth with water, how they appear again after the earth? And I said, why are you waiting for your brothers? And why don't you perform the litur liturgy before the face of Yahweh? Start up your liturgy and perform the liturgy before the face of Yahweh so that you do not enrage your Yahweh Elohim to its limit. And they responded to my recommendations and they stood in four regiments in this heaven. And behold, while I was standing with those men, four trumpets trumped in unison with a great sound and the Gregory burst into singing in unison. And their voices rose in front of the face of Yahweh um, piteously and touchingly. So we have the order of some of these angels still up there uh, deciding if they're going to worship Yahweh or not. That means that they have free will still to rebel, y'all, and to come down and do what? Birth demons. I'm in 2 Enoch 29. And for all the heavenly troops, I image the image of an essence of fire. This is how he can describe them, an essence of fire. You could say trons, electrons, neutrons, protrons, detrons, trons, fires. And my eye looked at the very hard, firm rock, and from the gleam of my eye, the lightning received its wonderful nature. Lightning is up there, y'all, which is both fire and water. And water and fire. And one does not put out the other, nor does one dry up the other. This is real fire. Therefore, the lightning is brighter than the sun, softer than water, and firmer than a heart of rock. That's, y'all don't even understand. And from the rock, I cut off a great fire. And from the fire, I created the orders of the incorporeal. Ten troops of angels or spirits and their weapons are fiery. What power do they have, y'all? What's their power? In the most simplest way we can call it, what is their power? Electricity. <laughs> I mean, like I said, there's other trons. Electricity is only one form of it. That's the best way we can describe it. As he says, like lightning, fire and water, water and fire. Mm -hmm. And their raiment of burning flame. And I commanded that each one should stand in his order. And one from out the order of angels or spirits having turned away with the order that was under him, conceived an impossible thought so somebody rebelled their rank of the 10 troops, right? Having turned away the order that was under him, conceived an impossible thought to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth. Well, who would that be? That's Satan. But Satan was not of the highest order. It was only one. There was out of four, out of 10 troops of angels, they stood in a ray of four in order and one of them conceived an impossible thought to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth. That's the same thing. I'm going to raise myself like Elohim above the side. That's in us. I'll raise myself above us. That he might become equal in rank to my power. And I threw him out from the height with his angels. That would be Satan. But you see, Satan is not the highest of the order. And he was flying in the air continuously above the bottomless, the abyss. And I saw Tohu and Bohu. And there was darkness, Koshak, upon the face of the abyss. Well, how did it get there? Satan. And he took an order of angels with him. Adam, I'm in 2nd Enoch 31. Adam, his life on earth, and I created a garden in the in Eden in the east, that he should observe the testament and keep the command. I made the heavens open to him that he should see the angels singing the song of victory and the gloomless light. 
and he was continuously in paradise and the devil understood that I wanted to create another world. So remember I said that in the beginning, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth, but something happened. Something happened. Because Adam was master on the earth to rule and control it. The devil is the evil spirit of the lower places. As a fugitive, when he was cast out of heaven with his angels, he made Sotona from the heavens as his name was Satan El, Satan. So this world is not the world that Yah created. It's called Satonia. Everything in this world is not Yah's creation, y'all. It's through Satan. But his nature, thus he became different from the angels when he was cast down. But his nature, his essence did not change. His intelligence, his knowledge of the, of, the, of the higher realm, as far as his understanding, his mind of righteousness and sinful things didn't change. And he understood his condemnation and the sin which he had sinned before. Therefore, he conceived the thought against Adam. So what he did was before Adam, y'all, he made the earth, whatever y'all created in the beginning, he caused that to fall and created another world. Adam was created to be master over it, but Adam didn't get tricked until after the fact. Satan was on this earth with his angels in a form. And he understood his condemnation and the sin which he had sinned before. Therefore, he conceived the thought against Adam. But wait, we just read that he conceived of inconceivable thought. What was the thought? An impossible thought. Where was I? He said, yes, and one out of the order of angels. Having turned away the order was under him, conceived an impossible thought to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth. Well, who was supposed to be that? No, Adam. He was the image of Elohim, Yahoshua, that was made on the earth, but he was not created from the earth to become equal in rank to my power. Well, that thought is this thought. It is what we see in the scripture that I'm trying to show you what the devil said. He said, and I will rise above the congregation. It tells you the congregation is who? Yah's chosen and elect. To the size of the north. What's the north? I showed you, right? I showed you in, um, what was it? No rapture, no wings. That the size of the north, according to the scriptures, means the seat of the king and the priesthood. Where's that? Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. This is his seat. And the size of the north is inside of us, which was Adam made in image of Elohim. Created he him, created he them. So that inconceivable thought is this. And he conceived the thought against Adam, who was Elohim representative on this earth. In such form, he entered and seduced Hawa, but did not touch Adam. Why did he go after Hawa first? Because she was the weaker at that time? No. She was the mother of life at that time. So Yahoshua is the life. Not that life wasn't in him, but she was holding the manifestation of the life in this world. That's why this, I know, slow down. Y'all not ready for this. <laughs> slow down, let me not go there. All right, I'm just trying to keep it simple so you can understand it on the third degree, All right? He came to her, but he did not touch Adam. But I cursed ignorant. She was ignorant. That's why he went to her first of all, 
because of the ignorance that she had. What was the ignorance? Huh? There was ignorance of herself, but the command not to eat was given to Adam, not to her. Adam translated it to her. She didn't get that order straight from Yah. She, people keep saying that, but no, he didn't separate her when he gave Adam the command. But I curse ignorance. So there's a law of ignorance at play. And we talked about this last night. Why was Satan forward our awakening to understand that we were the sons of light, the children of Adam from the beginning in the image of Elohim? Why does he want to waken our eyes quicker? Why did he use the poor watchman? Why did he use, what's his name? Yash, uh, Yarashalam, who was nothing but an agent, military sharp sniper, used to forward this awakening in a very quick way. Why would Satan use people to open our eyes to understand that we were supposed to be the children of light, the elect? Because there's a curse of ignorance. And the moment that we are no longer ignorant, we're guilty. We're guilty. But what I had blessed previously, I did not curse. So he didn't curse the image of Elohim, created he him, created he them. He cursed the fallen state of them. I curse not man. He cursed the beast in us. Nor the earth, the earth that he created in the beginning. Watch. Nor other creatures, but man's evil fruit. So this Satania, Satania world that was created now, which you see now from the Tohu and Bohu 5,000 years ago, Satan needed us to do it. We did his service to create his world the whole time. And we still doing his bidding to create his world. But the real earth that y'all created in the beginning is not here. The man that he created in the beginning is not us. And the creatures that he created in the beginning is not this. Everything is in a fallen state. But man's evil fruit and his works, everything that we built with the influence of Satan after that, that's what was cursed. What are we fighting against? I'm in 2nd Enoch 32. And I said to him, earth, you are, and into the earth whence I took you, you shall go. He cursed the earth man. And I will not ruin you, but send you whence I took you. So that death was not a permanent death. The spirit and the soul of a man was still alive. He didn't curse it yet. Then I can again receive you at my second presence can't receive you now and i blessed all my creatures visible physical and invisible spiritual and adam was five and a half hours in paradise and i blessed the seventh day which is the shabbat on which he rested from all his work so adam was involved with creating that paradise but when he fell he fell to satonia and started to create satan's work because he still had dominion. Did he take dominion away from him? Even after his fall? No. But when we're talking about our influence as Elohim. Whatever Elohim we will serve. Is the one that's giving us our information. Our influence. Our thoughts. Our doings. Our works. We are receivers. We were co-creators. So are we building Yah's kingdom? His house? Or are we building Satan? That's what we've been building for the last 5,000 years and everything on it. And that's what we're still doing. This is first Enoch, the blessing of Enoch. There, these are the words of the blessing of Enoch according to which he blessed the chosen and righteous who must be present on the day of distress, which is appointed for the removal of all the wicked and impious. Now read this again. These are the words. Enoch left us a message. Here it is. These are the words of the blessing of Enoch, according to which he blessed the chosen and the righteous who must be present 
on the day of distress. That's the evil day. There's something that Enoch is telling us we need to understand about the evil day. But what did he go into explaining? So we see revelations that talks about all that takes the image, the mark of the beast, the name, the image or the mark. But Enoch don't talk about no mark. What does he talk about? Let's see. Whatever this warning is, it's about the mark of the beast, the image and the name. That's what he warned us from. But Revelations is, is one of us against the beast. And Enoch began his story and said, there was a righteous man whose eyes were opened by Yahweh. And he saw a holy vision in the heavens, which the angels showed to me. And I heard everything from them and I understood what I saw, but not from this generation, but for a distant generation that will come. Concerning the chosen, I spoke and I uttered a parable concerning them. The holy and great one will come out of his dwelling. We see the prophecies of that. The eternal Elohim will tread from there upon Mount Sinai and he will appear with the host and will appear in the strength of his power from heaven. And all will be afraid and the watches will shake. So we know about the watches in the book. Ezekiel talks about the watches. There's good ones and there's bad ones still. So what watches is coming down? How do you know? So what is a watcher or alien? So what? You saw it. How do you know it's not a watcher that's in rebellion? Well, you must try every spirit. So the watchers will shake y'all. Why? Because we're going to judge them. The, even the angels in heavens. How are you going to judge angels if you can't judge amongst yourself? We are going to judge angels. He did not say demons, y'all. He said we're going to judge angels. Why? Because they're not demons yet. Those are angels. They're not demons. They're just wicked spirits in high places. Those are still angels or watchers or aliens. Okay. Tribbling will seize them up to the ends of the earth and the high mountains will be shaken and the high hills will be laid low and will melt like wax in a flame. We see that in Joel. We see that in Zechariah. We see that in Revelations. The appearing of Yahweh is a consuming fire, lightning, thundering, fire, brimstone, sulfur, electricity, darkness, hail, thunderstorm. And the earth will sink. We see that in prophecy. And the mountains will move out of their places. And some will be found no more. So then we got tsunamis going on. We got tectonic plates shifting going on. Well, what I said, I said it's going to be an earthquake. What Revelation said, it's an earthquake. And everything that is on the earth will be destroyed. And there will be judgment upon all and upon all the righteous. But for the righteous, he will make peace and he will keep safe the chosen. What? We still on the earth? Where do you see Enoch said nothing about we going up anywhere? We still right here on the earth. He said he's going to make peace with us. And he will keep us from this destruction on the earth. Safe and chosen and mercy will be upon them. Well, when we get to back to Ephesians, when he says, showed your feet with the glad tidings of your peace. Obviously, there's a place that he's going to keep us safe, the elect and the chosen. And I don't see nothing about going up nowhere in this. Ain't no rapture in this. And mercy will be upon them. I will have mercy upon them. And they will all be long to Elohim. And I will prosper and be, and they, and will prosper and be blessed. And the light of Elohim will shine on them. And behold, he comes with 10,000 holy ones to execute judgment upon them, to destroy the impious and to contend with all flesh concerning everything that the sinners and the impious have done and wrought against him. Where do you see us doing anything? Where do you see us doing anything? No, we kept safe away. He coming to do his bit. 
with his 10,000s of holy ones. I'm in six. And it came to pass when the sons of men had increased that in those days they were born to them fair and beautiful daughters. And the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said to one another, come, let us choose for ourselves wives from the children of, this is the beginning of witches. And let us beget for ourselves children. The first sign of a witch or the influence of a fallen angel upon a woman is when she makes herself up. As a seductress. That's the first sign of a witch. That's the first sign that she's influenced by misogynist angels. You, you see what I'm saying? Because she's playing into the image that causes them to treat us like that. But she did it for them. So y'all also talks about why a woman should cover her head. It's our glory. But what's our hair? Our DNA. It grows long. They're very attracted to it. And they want to reproduce with life. Why are they going after women? They're not reproducing with men. They're reproducing with us. We have the life in us to bring manifestation on this earth. You need us too. They need us, you need us. That's why Satan went to her first. But no, there was no sex, y'all, that took place. Satan did not have sex with Adam. You will see that in no testimony. I mean, with Eve. There is no testimony that says that. This is after Adam, the fall. This is not when Satan came down. And this is not when he went back up into the heavens. There was no sex in heaven, y'all. Eve did not take on the physical body until she fell from after the curse. What he did was implant a thought in her mind. A knowledge. She ate of it. She considered it. That's what's called touch. When you touch, you be like, don't touch that. When you touch my, don't touch it, right? You be like, don't even think about it. And some, I don't want to call the names. That one right there. This is not Satan, y'all. This is another one. Him who was the leader. That's a principality. said to them, I fear that you may not wish this deed to be done and that I alone will pay for this great sin. And they all answered him and said, let us all swear an oath and bind one another with curses so not to alter this plan, but to carry out this plan effectively. Then they all swore together and all bound one another with curses to it. And they were in all 200 and they came down on Ardis, which is the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called the mountain Hermon because on it they swore and bound one another with a curse. So Mount Hermon was an open door. Which heaven was this? Was this the fifth one or the, or the second one? I forget. This was the second one. Mount Hermon was an open gateway, pathway, door in the heavens to the second heaven. They came down through that gateway. And these are the names of their leaders. Daradi, who was their leader, that's a principality. Blah, 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 right? So we got here the leader and under him, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 names here, but he's saying 200 of them came down. Those were principalities, watchers. But there was the leader of them. That's not Satan, y'all. Satan was already here and his angels. Satan came down with 200,000 thousands before already. These are the leaders of 200 angels and all of the others with them. All of them had orders underneath them. 
They took wives for themselves and everyone chose for himself one each. And they began to go into them and were promiscuous with them. And they taught them charms and spells. And they showed them the cutting of roots and trees. And they became pregnant and bore large giants. They had to alter their nature. They came down and took on human flesh, y'all. But their DNA was still a spirit. And they became pregnant and bore large giants and their height was 3,000 cubits. No, a 3,000 cubit baby didn't come out of her, but they grew fairly quick, y'all. Fairly quick. These devoured all the toil of men. Under men were unable to sustain them and the giants turned against them in order to devour men, cannibalism. And they began to sin against birds and against animals and against reptiles and against fish. And they devoured one another's flesh. They ate each other and drank the blood from it for life y'all, cause they couldn't get enough. But when they began to defile these animals, it was through bestiality and whatever other knowledge they had to intermix. So we talking about humans, angels, principalities, Nephilim that's already mixed and animals. It's called a chimera. Monsters walking on the face of this earth. Yes, the Greeks didn't make it up. They didn't make it up, y'all. They took it from the story. These things existed, and they just exist today, but they don't want us to see giants walking around in monsters. They found a way to hide it. That's what they're doing now. Why is Enoch telling us about this today? Why is he warning us about this right now? Because that's what they're doing right now. How are they doing it? How are they doing it? Through the medication and the vaccines. Of course, the spiritual world can still do it. But half of these people are so ignorant of the spiritual world, they could be sleeping with a man, an angel, or a fallen angel, and they wouldn't even know it. These women are so loose, they don't even know what they're sleeping with. But like I said, they are being birthed through the children now. So these men grow up demonic, misogynistic, and you marry these men, but it's vice versa now because it's not like they didn't birth women either, right? Both ways, these spirits. And you birthing children upon children with demonic spirits, y'all. Then the earth complained about the lawless ones. And A-Z-A-Z-L, another one, right? Taught men to make swords and daggers and shields and breastplates. What? It wasn't y'all that taught us to do it? No. Y'all had to take the knowledge and use it for good. But it was the knowledge, like I said, we're living by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In this physical world, this is evil. There's only one reason to make swords, daggers, shields, and breastplates, and that's to kill somebody. But y'all never intended for man to kill anybody. And he showed them the things after these and the art of making them. Bracelets and ornaments and the art of making of the eyes. That's right. Somebody be like, oh, so we evil because we wear eyeliner? Yup. Where did the influence come from? Demons. What's the point of it? Seduction. Seduction. Bracelets and ornaments. Is it evil to wear bracelets and ornaments? No, it's not evil if you do it within the will of Yah. But we see that when Yahushua came, he's like, hey, don't be doing all of that. He didn't say you can't, but don't be modesty. A witch is always jingling, y'all. They got five, six, ten bracelets. Bang, clank, clank, clank. As soon as they move their heads, they're clinking in your ear and stuff like that. Witches. And when they're wearing bracelets, it's not just for beauty. When they do it, it they, they, they're trying to pick out the science behind it. 
All right. They be all these trinkets with, with um, emotional attachments on it. And this mean that, and this mean that, and just chingling. Oh, this, remember, you know what I'm doing, right? Morika Davis in the hotel. Oh, this, and this means this, um, right? That's a witch. And they wear a certain gold, and it, right? It, gold is beautiful, but they over here, like, I wear the copper because it, it brings out the power of my hands when I touch somebody, and when I do this. And, and when you clinking and clinking, y'all, it does something to somebody's mind when you're moving your hands like this, and it's clink, 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 clink. Right? That's an electrical sound that's going out when metal is clinking like that, y'all. It's called a symbol. Right? And the art of making up the eyes. That's right. A demon taught you women to do that, not Yah. And a beautiful beautifying the eyelids. Yah taught you to do it. It's the first point of seduction. And I showed in the Bible when it talks about the hearty, seductress woman. The whore, the first thing that he describes is her eyes, how she bats them. And the most precious stones, it's nothing wrong with wearing a stone, but you start putting your faith. I wear this one because it has the power and it has the charm of this and it gives me good luck with that. And it wards up this evil spirit and that evil spirit and all kinds of colored dyes, right? Nothing wrong with color. But too much color is to be seen, and that's a witch, y'all. And the world was changed. The world was changed. And there was great impiety and much fornication. Whatever all this stuff was, it created more impiety in the world and a lot more fornication, sex. So don't tell me that the eyes, the making up of the eyes is just to look, uh, I don't know. It's to look more fornicated like, more seductive. And they went astray and all their ways became corrupt. All of this was corruption, y'all. And this thing taught all those who cast spells and cut roots. And this thing, the release of spells. Okay, that's uh, NLP, linguistics. This is also enchantments or hypnosis or rep repetitive speech or sort of chanting or mantras. And this one, astrologers, to read the stars. And to find out your mazal, your luck, your energy pathway, your alignment with the stars in the universe to see what's coming to you. And this one, uh, portent. I don't know what that means. Um, sometimes I hate some of the translations. Somebody can go get their phone. What is a portent? Signs. What? Omens. Signs. Omens. Right? And this one taught astrology. And this one taught the path of the moon. And at the destruction of men, they cried out and their voices reached heaven. And when Mikael, Gabriel, Suriel, and Uriel looked down from heaven and saw the mass of blood that was being shed on the earth and all the iniquity that was being done on the earth, because when they did these things, y'all, they was doing sacrifices too. Please understand that all of this stuff came with sacrifices, right? And they said to one another, let the devastated earth cry out with the sound of their cries up to the gate of heaven. We're talking about murder and death and kill right now. And now to you, O holy ones of heaven, all of this is a warning for us today. The souls of men complain saying, bring our complaint before the most high. Their blood is crying out. And they said to their Yah, the king, ruler of rulers, Elohim of Elohim, King of kings, your glorious throne endures for all the generations of the world and bless it and praise. Why is Enoch telling us about this? For the last day? You have made everything and power over everything is yours and everything is uncovered and open in front of you. 
and you see everything and there is nothing that can be hidden from you. See then what A-Z-A-Z-E-L has done. How he taught all iniquity on the earth and revealed the eternal secrets that are made in heaven. He taught secrets in heaven, y'all. That would be like an alien. Come down, showing us great things. Of course, they use physical things on this earth, y'all. But we didn't know that they existed. These things were underneath the earth. He taught us how to find stones and gems and stuff like that. He taught us how to find mercury and copper and iron and stuff. That stuff is deep in the ground, y'all. That ain't on the surface for man to figure out. He got to learn how to make tools upon tools. He got to learn how to... Uh, build fires upon fires for this stuff. He got to learn chemistry for this stuff. He taught them secrets of heaven that man wasn't supposed to know. And they still teaching us secrets of heaven. And this one had made no spells. He to whom you gave authority to rule over those who are with him. And they went into the daughters of men together, lay with those women, became unclean, and reveal to them these sins. What? What I just read. They were sins. They were not supposed to know this knowledge. And the women bore giants and thereby the whole earth have been filled with blood and iniquity. And now behold, the souls which have died cried out and complained unto the gate of heaven and their lament has ascended and they cannot go out in the face of the iniquity which is being committed on the earth. And you know everything before it happens, and you know this, and what concerns each of them. But you say nothing to us. What ought we to do with them about this? Why do we need to understand this about the last day? And then the Most High, the Great and Holy One, spoke and sent this one. I think this might be a good one. I see Allah to the son of Lomek and said to him, Say to him in my name, hide yourself and reveal to him the end, which is coming because the whole earth will be destroyed. A deluge is about to come on all the earth and all that is in it will be destroyed. And now teach him so that he may escape and his offspring may survive for the whole earth. And further, Yahweh said to Raphael, bind A-Z-A-Z-E-L by his hand and his feet and throw him into the darkness and split open the desert, which is in Dudiel, and throw him there. And throw him, throw on him jagged and sharp stones and cover him with darkness and let him stay there forever and cover his face so that he may not see the light. So that the great day of judgment, he may be hurled into the fire and restore the earth, which the angels have ruined and announce the restoration of the earth. For I shall restore the earth so that no, not all the sons of men shall be destroyed because of the knowledge which the watchers made known and taught to their sons. Knowledge. And the whole earth had been ruined by the teachings of the works of A-Z-A-Z-L and against him write all sin. And Yahweh said to Gabriel, proceed against the bastards and though reprobates and against the sons of the fornicators and destroy the sons of the fornicators and the sons of the watchers from among men and send them out and send them against one another. So whoever these children of the watchers are today, they fight against each other. No big deal. And let them destroy themselves in battle for they will not have a length of days. And they will petition you, but the petitioners will gain nothing in respect of them for they hope for eternal life and that each of them will live life for 500 years. So they wanted eternal life then, but they couldn't. They came through physical women. That's why they hate them because they got to die. But they want eternal life now. So when you see little geniuses being born, that's over here talking about, I'm gonna find the elixir of eternal life. That's a watcher's child that got manifested in the baby. 
And Yahweh said to Mikael, go inform this one, the S, and the others with him who have associated with the women to corrupt themselves with them in all their uncleanliness. When all their sons kill each other and when they see the destruction of their loved ones, bind them for 70 generations. How long is 70 generations? That's a long time. <laughs> all right, 70 generations until the end. That's the last generation. Under the hills of the earth until the day of their judgment. That's the last day of their consummation. Until the judgment, which is for all eternity, is accomplished. So that means that what? They are bound. But where are they bound? On the earth. They are bound on the earth, right? And in those days, they will lead them to the abyss of fire in torment and in prison. They will be shut up for all eternity. And then the SMY will be burnt and from then on destroyed with them together. They will be bound until the end of all generations and destroy all the souls of lust and the sons of the watches for they have wronged men so there was a binding of them for 70 generations all right let's get let's get some understanding to so the very last generation that means that they're going to be released to be thrown back in again destroy all wrong from the face of the earth and every evil work will cease and now all the righteous will be humbled and will live until they beget thousands and all the days of their youth and their Shabbats, they will fulfill in peace. And in those days, the whole earth will be tilted in righteousness and all of it will be planted with trees and it will be filled with blessings. This is the kingdom. And all the pleasant trees, they will plant on it and they will plant on its vine. And the vine that is planted on it will produce fruit in abundance. And every seed that is sown on it, each measure will produce a thousand. And each measure of olives will produce 10 babes of oil. And you cleanse the earth from all wrong and from all iniquity and from all sin and from all impiety and from all the uncleanness which is brought about on the earth. And all the sons of men shall be righteous and all the nations shall serve and bless me and all shall worship me. And the earth will be cleansed from all corruption and from all sin and from all wrath and from all torment, and I will not again send a flood upon it for all generations forever. So we know the first world was destroyed by water, but we have to utterly destroy them. They weren't destroyed, they were just bound. All and in all in, in those days I will open the storehouses of blessings which are in heaven, so that I might send down upon the earth, upon the work, and upon the toil of the sons of men. Peace and truth will be united for all the days of eternity and for all the generations of eternity. And then Enoch disappeared and none of the sons of men knew where he was hidden, where he was and what happened. And all his doings were with the holy ones and with the watchers in his days. And I, Enoch, was blessing the great Yahweh, the king of eternity. And behold, the watchers called me. Enoch described and said to me, Enoch, Scribe of righteousness, go and inform the watchers of heaven who have left the high heaven and the holy eternal place and have corrupted themselves with women and have done as the sons of men do and have taken wives for themselves and have become completely corrupted on the earth. They will have on earth neither peace nor forgiveness of sin, for they will not rejoice in their sons. The slaughter of their beloved ones, they will see. And over the destruction of their sons, they will lament and petition forever, but they will have neither mercy nor peace. And Enoch went and said to Azazel, you will have no peace and severe sentence has come against you that you should be bound. And you will have neither rest nor mercy, nor the granting of any petitions because of the wrong which you have taught and because of all the works of blasphemy and wrong and sin which you have shown to the sons of men. All our knowledge, y'all, is evil. And then I went to speak to them all together, and they were all afraid, fearing and trembling seized them. 
And they asked me to write out from them the record of, of a petition so that they might receive forgiveness and to take a record of their petition up to Yahweh in heaven. So they asked Enoch, as we read in the first one, can you please go up there and talk to Yahweh for us, please? The watchers. For they were not able from them on, from then on to speak. And they did not raise their eyes to heaven out of shame for their sins for which they had been condemned. No, these aliens have been here on the earth, y'all. They didn't come out of heaven. They just had men and their spirits of their sons to influence men to go back in and teach them how to find iron, find cobalt, find this titanium, find this, find that, build this, build that. Let me show you how to, they re-show them in this world, the sciences so that they can be made manifest again and find out how to get their children inside the men, the bodies and the souls of men again, so that they can rebuild what y'all destroyed from before. For they were not able, they couldn't talk to y'all anymore from then on to speak. And they did not raise their eyes to heaven out of shame for their sins for which they had been condemned. And then I wrote out of the record of their petition and their supplication in regards to their spirits. Now, this is before the earth was destroyed the first time. I'm saying after the earth was destroyed the second time, they was like, well, screw y'all there. That, that would, they, uh, get, they got an answer. After you get an answer, nope, be gone, all right? The demons are gonna, just going to do worse. They'd be like, well, I'm going to tear it up then. So believe me that this attitude that they have then is not now. And then I wrote out of the record of their petition and their supplication in regard to their spirits and the deed of each one of them and in regard to what they asked. And they should obtain absolution and forbearance. No, these things was bound on earth. We released them. They try to act like they came out of the heavens. No, they didn't. They've been here the whole time. They've been here. Y'all, they've been here. And I went down by the waters of Dan, in Dan, which is southwest of Hermon. And I read out of the record of their petition until I fell asleep. And behold, a dream came to me and the visions fell upon me. And I saw a vision of wrath that I should speak to the sons of heaven to reprove them. And I woke up and went to them and they were all sitting gathered together as they mourned in Ubesil Yael, which is between Lebanon and Shinar, with their faces covered. And I spoke in front of them all, the visions that I had seen in my sleep. And I began to speak these words to reprove the watches of heaven. Now, these watches are the ones that's bound on earth. So the very place that they, on Mount Hermon right now, you can go up to a certain portion of the top, but the very top of that mountain is gated and guarded by military. It's a military base there. Everywhere where they thought a porthole to heaven, to some abnormal or celestial activity was reported. They built a military base all over the world where this happened. These things happened. It's a gateway, it's a porthole. I, I told you about the devil's, what is the devil's? No, not devil's, uh, no, no, not that one. Huh? Say it again. No, not that one. Um, The gate. That was, uh, it was a movie that, it was the Devil's Gate, right? No, 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 no. But that movie was based upon an FBI file about a mountain in Russia that was a porthole and the military seized it, but then they had to close this thing up because these demons was coming in and out. The watchers and their children. This is the word of righteousness and of reproof for the watchers who are from eternity as the holy and great one commanded in that vision. I saw in my sweet sleep that I will not, I will now tell with the tongue of flesh and will, and with my breath, with the great one, which the great one has given me in the mouth so that they might speak with it and understand with the heart. As he created and appointed men to understand the word of knowledge so he created and appointed me to reprove the watchers, the sons of heaven. And I wrote out your petition, but in my vision, thus it appeared that your petition would not be granted to you for all the days of eternity, 
and complete judgment has been decreed against you and you will not have peace. And from now on, you will not ascend into heaven for all eternity. And it has been decreed that you will be bound on earth for all the days of eternity. Where were they bound? On earth. They've been here the whole time, y'all. And before this, you will have seen the destruction of your beloved sons and you will not be able to enjoy them, but they will fall before you by the sword. And your petition will not be granted in respect of them in respect of yourselves. And you will weep and supplicate. You do not speak a single word from the writing which I, I have written. And the vision appeared to me as follows. Behold, clouds called me in the vision and mist called me and the path of the stars and the flashes of lightning hastened me and drove me. And in the vision, winds caused me to fly and hasten me and lifted me up into the sky. And I proceeded until I came near the wall, which was made of hailstorms and a tongue of fire surrounded it. And it, be, it began to make me afraid. And I went into the tongue of fire and came near to a large house, which was built of hailstones. And the wall of that house was like a mosaic of hailstones and its floor was snow can't imagine this y'all its roof was like the path of the stars and flashes of lightning among them was fiery carabine and their sky was like water and there was a fire burning around its wall and its doors was ablaze with fire and I went into the house and it was as hot as fire and as cold as snow nitrogen ice and there was neither pleasure nor life in it fear fear covered me and trembling took hold of me and as I was shaking and trembling, I fell on my face and I saw in the vision and behold another house, which was larger than the former and all of its doors were open before me. And it was built of a tongue of fire and in everything it so excelled in glory and splendor and size so that I am unable to des describe to you its glory and its size. In my father's house, there are mansions upon mansions upon mansions, dominions, y'all, dominions. This is not about physically going to space. This is about going through the fire and the water. And its floor was fire and above lightning and the path of the stars and its roof also was a burning fire. And I looked and I saw in it a high throne and its appearance was like ice and it surrounds like the shining sun and the sound of Caribbean. And from underneath the high throne, there flowed out rivers of fire so that it was impossible to look at. What kind of fire is that? We can't even look at the sun. Y'all. And he, man, it's so white, it's bright. And he who is great in glory sat upon it and his raiment was brighter than the sun and whiter than any snow. And no angel could enter. And at the appearance of the face of him who is honored and praised, no creature of flesh could look. A sea of fire burnt around him and a great fire stood in front of him and none of those around him came near to him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him, but he needed no holy counsel. What are we talking about? Hey, Yehoshua, that's the glory. That's the glory, that's Yehoshua. And the holy ones who were near him, near to him, did not leave by night or day and did not depart from him. And until then, I had a covering on my face as I trembled. And Yahweh called me with his, out of, with his own mouth and said to me, come here, Enoch, to my holy word. He lifted me up and brought me near to the door. And I looked with my face down. And he answered me and said to me with his voice, here, do not be afraid, Enoch, you righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Come here and hear my voice. And go, say to the watches of heaven who sent you to petition on their behalf. You ought to petition on behalf of men, not men on behalf of you. How dare you send a man? I sent you to help man and you went and harmed him. That's why we're going to judge him. Why have you left the high, holy and eternal heaven and lain with women and become unclean with the daughters of men? and take wives for yourselves and done as the sons of the earth and begotten giant sons. And you were spiritual, holy, living an eternal life, but you became unclean upon the women 
and begot children through the blood of flesh. That's how they became unclean. Through the blood of flesh. They mix their spiritual DNA, light, with blood of flesh, which is not everlasting. To make the flesh man. Because they don't have access to the tree of life. They only had access to the full proteins. And lusted after the blood of men. And produced flesh and blood as they do who die and are destroyed. Why would you do that? You were eternal. And for this reason, I gave men wives. This is the reason why we marry y'all. No other reason. I gave them wives so that they can continue to live and reproduce because the flesh and they, they die and they are destroyed. That's why we have wives. But now that eternal life has been brought through Yahushua HaMashiach, the promise of eternal life has been brought now. And we that are standing in the last day, this day, why would Yahushua teach? You don't need a wife. And for this reason, I give men wives so that they may sow seed in them and so that children might be born by them so that deeds might be done on the earth. Yah had, a, there was a work to do. Satan was building. He was looking for what? The righteous seed. But we kept birthing what? Wicked seed. So what's your children good for? Y'all don't need all your babies. I'm talking about they building a kingdom with seven wives. This is a hundred babies. It, it, all your babies is wicked. What good is it? You ain't doing nothing but misogynistic uh, watcher behavior. That's right. Your babies are good for nothing if they're not going to do what? The deeds of Yah. But you formerly were spiritual, living an eternal immortal life for all the generations of the world. For this reason, I did not arrange wives for you because the dwelling of the spiritual ones is in heaven. That's how Yahushua said, you do error. In the resurrection, we will be angels and angels don't marry. Angels don't have sex. Can angels have sex? What they got to do to do it? They have to change into flesh and come down in a body. And now the giants who were born from body and flesh will be called evil spirits. So now we got the leaders, the principalities. We got the leaders. And now we got the evil spirits on the earth and the on the earth will be their dwelling for we war against what everything that Enoch is describing is what Ephesians was talking about but they're right here y'all giving knowledge influencing you influencing dignitaries what is that oh, okay and evil spirits came out from their flesh after the flood, when they died, the grave was their, the water was their grave. And evil spirits came out from them. Their spirit did not die, only the flesh. From, because, from above, they were created. They were created from above. How was they created from above? The above is, is the spiritual world, the unseen world, from in the heaven. They came, they was they still had spiritual DNA. They were created from above. We're talking, uh, we're talking about the children of these. So these are the watchers and the humans. They were created from above, right? Where was I? The only one uh, that were created from the holy watchers was their origin and first foundation. Evil spirits, they will be on the earth, and spirits of evil ones. They will be called and the dwelling of the spirits of heaven in heaven is heaven. So the spirits are in heaven, but the dwelling of the spirits of the earth were born on the earth is earth. So we got two classes. 
And the spirits of the giants do wrong and corrupt, attack, fight, break on the earth and cause sorrow. And they eat no food, do not thirst and are not observed. What is saying? Can't see them. But how they do all these things? Through man. It's called possession. Once they attach to your neurons and your body, then they can live through you like, huh? Vicariously through you or like a machine. They, they destroy your soul ever so slowly so that they can take over all of you and they assume your body after that. They have no bodies. So they have to assume a body. But if we just give flesh, they can do that a multiple kind of ways now. They don't have to birth babies from the womb, even though they're doing that, they've learned how to what? Take DNA out, take eggs out from women, splice them. We got the alien stories about abductions and taking a seed and doing all kinds of experiments on their brain and their organs. Why? <clears throat> These spirits of the giants, they do wrong. They are, they corrupt you, they attack you, they fight break on the earth and cause sorrow and they eat no food, but they still hunger y'all. They uh, do not thirst and are not observed. You cannot see them. But Enoch tells you that they still desire. They still remember, right? As spirits, they don't thirst, but they remember the desire of food, flesh, fornication. And they do it through you. These spirits will raise against the sons of men and against women. Because they came out of them during the days of slaughter and destruction. They hate women. And the death of the giants. Wherever the spirits have gone out from their bodies. Their flesh will be destroyed before the judgment. Thus they will be destroyed until the day of the great consummation is accomplished until the great age upon the watchers and the impious ones. So their spirits are being reserved for the great consummation, the fire. And now the watchers who sent you to petition on their behalf who were formerly in heaven, you were in heaven, but its secrets have not yet been revealed to you. Meaning, I didn't even give them all the secrets. So all the weapons, that they are harnessing from the heavens now, y'all didn't even give them all the secrets. Who gonna have a real secret in the end? So what's our weapons? They're building weapons and devices against us, but there is a weapon, there is a secret in heaven that they don't know. There is a power above whatever power that they had in their fifth heaven. <clears throat> and worthless mystery you knew. They taught y'all worthless things, vain things. It's going to amount to nothing. This you made known to women in the hardness of your hearts. <clears throat> so why did they do it when they got their um, judgment and they realized, oh, well, they said, okay, well, we're going to just teach every corruptible thing then. And through this mystery, the women and the men cause evil to increase on the earth. So they teach us knowledge, men and women, witches and warlocks, it's both. It ain't just women, right? It's both. And we make them, we serve them. They've used us to do their bidding. Say to them, therefore, you will not have peace. And thus says the ruler of spirits, this is the law and the judgment for the mighty and the kings and the exalted and for those who possess the dry ground in front of the ruler of spirits. And I saw other figures hidden in that place. There were other ones. And I heard the voice of the angel saying, these are the angels who come down from heaven on the earth and revealed what is secret to the sons of men and led astray the sons of men so that they commit sin. And on that day, the holy Mikael answered Raphael saying, the power of the spirit 
seizes me and makes me tremble because of the harshness of the judgment of the angels. Who can endure the harshness of the judgment which has been executed and before which they melt with fear? And the only Mikael answered Raphael again and said unto him, who would not soften his heart over it and whose mind would not be disturbed by this word? Judgment has gone out against them upon those who they have led out of this. But it came to pass when he stood before the ruler of spirits that the holy Mikael spoke as follows to Raphael. I will not take their part under the eye of Yahweh for the ruler of spirits is angry with them because they act as if they were the ruler. They have made themselves what? Elohim in the sight of men. Because of this, they the hidden judgment will come upon them forever and ever, for neither any other angel nor any man will receive their lot, but they alone have received their judgment forever and ever. There's another type of judgment for them. <clears throat> and after this judgment, I will terrify them and make them tremble, for they have shown this to those who dwell upon the dry ground. And behold, the names of these angels, the first of them, the chief, the principality was S-E-N-Y. And the second was this one, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth. And the eleventh, the twelfth, the thirteenth, the fourteenth, the fifteenth, the sixteenth, the seventeenth, to the eighteenth, to the nineteenth, to the twenty, to the twenty-first. And these are the chiefs of their angels. These are the principalities that Ephesians is talking about. And all the angels under their orders are the other ones, the thousands and thousands of them. And the names of the leaders of hundreds and their leaders of fifties and their leaders of tens. The name of the first is, this is the one who led astray all the children of the holy angels. And he brought them down onto the dry ground and led them astray through the daughters of men. And the name of the second, the name of the third, and the name of the, I'm going to skip on, it says the name of the third, this is the one who showed all the deadly blows to the sons of men, how to fight, and led astray power. So was it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Listen, y'all don't understand that Satan is a title <clears throat> or the devil is a title it's just called adversary but he'll use who he used whoever he will use he was the one that was used to speak a word to her and he showed the weapons of death to the children of men the shield and the breastplate the sword for slaughter and all the weapons of death to the sons of men and from his hand they had gone out against those who dwell the dry ground from that time and forever. And the name of the fourth showed the sons of men bitter and sweet and showed them all the secrets of their wisdom. He taught men the art of writing with ink and paper. And through this, many have gone astray from eternity to eternity. So is there something wrong with ink and paper? What is he saying? Because Enoch was told to write. How about the print press to write falsehood? To everybody writing their books. How did, how did knowledge get spread across the world? Through the writings that they was able to now reproduce. Back in the day, we used to write on stone, right? And only what was necessary, what y'all told us to write. Everything else was passed on through what? Oral tradition to keep going and going. Now, we didn't have TV and all this. Our memories was sharp, y'all. Our memories was sharp. Don't be confused to think that we couldn't remember whole books and whole speeches of what our father's testimonies was at that time. Right? He taught men to go astray by laying, by writing on paper and reproducing their wisdom and secrets to be passed on. 
for men were not created for this. I said this before that y'all never intended to write anything down in the book. It became a witness against us once he did it. That they should confirm their faith like this with pen and ink. It was never meant to be written. It was meant to be what? Heard and written on our hearts. For men were created no differently from the angels. How was we created? As Elohim. So that they might remain righteous and pure and death, which destroys everything, would not have touched them. I told you we were Elohim. We were created as angels. And that's what he's going to take us back to. But through this knowledge of theirs, they were being destroyed. And through this power, death consumes them. Through this knowledge. And through the power, death consumes them. Whatever knowledge was passed down, it is consuming them. And the name of the fifth is this. This one showed the sons of men all the evil blows of the spirits and of the demons. And the blows that attack the embryo in the womb so that it miscarries. But what we got going on now? Abortions. The evil blows of spirits and the demons. What's that? Diseases. The blows that attack the soul. The bite, that's right, the bite of the serpent. Huh? You see what I'm saying? So Enoch wrote this for us for the last days to be able to withstand. The attack of the embryo. So that the wound that it miscarries, but either a miscarriage or causing the miscarriage itself, which is what? What do y'all, the uh, pan, Planned Parenthood? Mm -hmm. This is where they got the babies and the cells to do all this stuff, right? The blows to attack the soul. What is attacking the soul? I'm going to say it again, y'all. What did I call it? The pea juice. The bite. The bite of the serpent. You see what I'm saying? You see what y'all are saying? Am I lying? But people still will speak like they know something. And the blows that occur at midday and the son of the serpent who is strong. So this is a prophecy about the end times, not the last days, but the end times in the middle of the week of one that Yah calls anointed, the one that he said that is anointed. Jeremiah 15 and 8 reads something like this when we talk about the midday or the noonday. This is the coming of Yahushua when he brings judgment on the house of Israel. There will be increased for me their widows from the sand of the sea. We are the sands of the sea, that's the house of Israel, meaning our Men will be destroyed and I will bring against them and on the mothers of young men, a destroyer, a plunderer. The word is so dead, but it comes from the word shed, which means demon, a demon in the noonday or the midday. And I will suddenly cause to fall on them anguish and terror. So this is a prophecy about the end of Israel, as well as the end of Babylon, right before that day, suddenly. Y'all said when they say peace, peace, then suddenly destruction is going to fall upon us. And this is the task of this one, the chief of the oath, who showed the oath of the holy ones when he dwelt in his high, on high in glory. And his name is whatever. And this one told the holy Mikael that he should show him the secret name so that they might mention it in the oath. So that those who showed the sons of men everything that is secret trembled before the name of the oath. So if you continue to read, I don't have all of that blocked out here. What that name is, that is secret, is Yahushua that has been hidden from the world until he was made manifest in his first coming. And this is the power of this oath. For it is powerful and strong, and he placed this oath, Ake, in, in the charge of the holy Mikael. And these are the secrets of this oath, that they are strong through this. 
oath and heaven was suspended before the world was created and forever. Now that's really interesting that it's saying that because it lends to what I was uh, teaching at one point about creation is that it says here, because of this, heaven was suspended before the world was created and forever. And I'm saying that even though Yahushua, I mean, Yah, Yahushua created the heavens and the earth in the beginning, that when Satan did what he did, and for the second time, the earth had not been finished, created, right? Though it was created, it was not manifest, right? It wasn't manifest. So everything was suspended. And by them doing this for the second time under Satan's bidding, it was suspended again. And so a whole new world was being created from that point on, as we just read, so Tanya, right? Now I'm in Jubilee's tent to affirm the storyline. I've stopped with Enoch. I'm sure there's more readings of Enoch. I didn't go through all of the books of Enoch to give all the details, but that is enough to understand the order of what we are fighting against. When we go back into Ephesians, now you can see it clearly, right? What is he talking about? Now, let me go back again. Man, I'm sorry. I have to read, um, where was that one? I want to I want to go back into this and I want to um I want to repeat. I may just like block this out and put this at the beginning. I'm in second Enoch the third parable at chap uh at um 69 and 12. First Enoch, let me say that again. I'm in first Enoch in the third parable and all of this is Enoch preparing and giving us a story for the last day to be able to stand against the last day. And he begins to tell us all the stories of the fallen angels, the leaders, how they did it, what they did, and how they defiled man, beast, women, everything, and the whole earth. And what evil spirits are, how they got formed. And in this, the name of one of the five archangels, the chiefs, this one showed the sons of men the evil blows of the spirits and of the demons. Now, I said the evil blows of the spirits and the demons is dis-ease. Mentally and physically, dis-ease. I'm gonna prove it in Jubilees. The blows of the evil spirits and of the demons is disease. And the blows that attack the embryo in the womb so that it miscarries. It's also disease, right? But we've learned to do it. What We've learned to harness the blows of the spirits and the demons and the blows of the embryo of the womb by our own devices, right? And all of this, they have learned to harness disease, to create disease, right? to create viruses, to create germs and bacteria and things that destroy and to create things that destroy the embryo and the blow that attacks the soul, which I said is the pea juice of the serpent. It's the bite of the serpent, all of the vaccines. It attacks the soul and the medication, y'all, all of the medication the bite of the serpent is the whole medical industry at the end of the day. Your liver, your kidneys, your gallbladder, your heart, your brain, your neurons, whatever it is, all of that stuff got a side effect on one of those things. That's your soul. And the bite of the serpent. And the blows that occur at midday, that fierce man of countenance that's going to appear in the middle of the week. That's going to enforce it. <clears throat> Jubilee 10. Now I'm in Jubilee. The blows of the demons and the, um, the blows of the spirits and the bite of the serpent. What? Who would have ever thought? People read past that and be like, what's the bite? What's the snake bite, y'all? That's a blow to your soul. To your soul means that you don't just, it's not a death. It's a perishing. 
I might have to string that out by itself. We're back in. I'm in Jubilees. Once again, it's to, pr to prove what the blow is. Jubilees 10. And in the third week of this Jubilee, the unclean, the unclean demons, that would be the ones that came out of the Nephilim that was born of the watchers, the chiefs, and their um, angels underneath them, and of women. The unclean spirits are the spirits that came out of them after they were destroyed in the flood. And they are evil spirits and demons that roam the earth doing things to man. Began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah. So this is after the flood, y'all. This is them now in demon form, spirit form, out of body. We know what they did to the earth for the last um years. Now they are in another form. And the sons of Noah to make to error and to destroy them. So the, the make to error is to influence them to do what is against Yah. To influence you or to make you to error and destroy them is to be able to whisper in your mind. To speak to you allow you to contemplate, reason, and think, and receive knowledge through the spirit world, right here. And the sons of Noah came to Noah, their father, and they told him concerning the demons, which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his son's sons. So they were leading astray, one, causing you to do wickedness, blinding you from the true path, Blinding is the same thing we read in Deuteronomy, which is to go mad, also not to be able to comprehend, have a moral compass, to uh, uh, comprehend wickedness and righteousness. You're mad now. And slaying his sons, meaning a blow to destroy your life as in dis-ease. And he prayed before Yahweh his Elohim and said, Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me, and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood and has not caused me to perish that thou didst the sons of perdition. That's the sons of perdition, the sons of Satan. For thy grace has been great towards me and great has thy been thy mercy to my soul. Let thy grace be lifted up upon my sons and let not wicked spirits rule over them lest they should destroy them from the earth. But do thou bless me and my sons that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth. I'm in Jubilees 10 and 5. And thou knowest how the watchers, the fathers of these spirits, acted in my day. And as for these spirits which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation. Now, are they living? These spirits, which are living, are they living? Yes, you can't see them though, right? They just have the power to influence you. They have the power to cause this ease. They have the power to hurt you some way or another and to lead you a, a, according off the path of Yah. They are alive. Well, what is these AEIOU saying? Oh, stay tuned for the end of this. I'm going to post another video about what these think, what's alive, what's claiming to be alive. All right. Imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation and let them not bring destruction on the sons of thy servant, my Elohim, for these are malignant and created in order to destroy. Now, this is all of them. These are all 100% of them. Who, that This is billions, y'all. This is billions. After 500,000 years of reproducing like that, who knows how many this is, right? And let them not rule over the spirits of the living, for thou alone canst exercise dominion over, this, over them. And let them not have power over the sons of the righteous from henceforth and forevermore. And Yahweh our Elohim has bade us to bind all. And the chief of the spirits Methema, right? Now I'm going to say something. Might be like, well, the chief was was Satan, right? It's the same word. 
coming from the same root. I'll show you in the notes. And come and said, Yahweh creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. So the chief of the spirits is Satan himself, who was from the fall before that bid this second fall, let me hold, let me have some of them. Noah is asking, can we bind them all? Satan comes and says, no, Satan has the power to go up there and still talk. No, nah, let me have some of them, right? So now when we was in Egypt, y'all said, I'll give you all the plagues of Egypt and even more. What's the more? Okay, ones that you've never known. Your fathers will serve demons that they never knew. Well, what's these demons that our fathers never knew? But yet they of old. What is these diseases that y'all said will come upon us in the last day that didn't exist in Egypt at that time? All right. And came and said, Yahweh creator, let some of them remain be uh, before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men, purposed. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. What did he just say? They're wicked anyway. Let me just use them to what? Bring them to the fullness of their heart. So remember, remember in the scripture it says, stop blaming Satan for everything, right? Y'all say, do you know the wickedness of your own heart? Satan knows your heart. He gets in there and gives you your own desire and makes you fill the cup. That's when y'all gives you over and you become reprobate. So the demons are not the ones that is forcing you, right? They're heavenly influencing you, but the wickedness is in you already, right? So he said, let me have some of them for this great destruction, right? You told me to take everybody out that I could. Do your best. So you got to leave me some so I can bring them to ultimate wickedness that I can bring them for this corruption in, right? You gave me a task, but how am I supposed to complete it without the power of my, my workers, my servants, right? And he said, let the tenth part of them remain before me. One tenth of these angels did all the wickedness that you've seen from that time until this generation and let a ninth part descend into the place of condemnation okay are they gone no and one of us he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines and he knew that they would not walk in uprightness nor strive in righteousness okay so people keep talking about herbs right now so yes he said, let us teach Noah their medicines, meaning what's the medicines for? For their blow. When demons strike, they cause you to have what? Dis-ease, mentally, physically, and spiritually. But one had to come and teach you some herbal medicines because of what? He knew that they would not walk in uprightness nor strive, strive in righteousness. Is herbs the answer? The herbs is temporary, y'all. It's a temporary relief. They will come back with seven more. How do we know this? This has been tested when Yahushua came. He healed people, not with herbs, not with medicine, with his word, with his name. And when they sinned again, when they did not walk in uprightness nor strive in righteousness, he said, worse will come, come upon you. There was, there's no herb now. Once y'all sure came, y'all. And this tells you and testifies that herbs of the earth was secondary measure. Medicine is not the answer. I'm going to read it again. And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines. How to thwart these demons when they give you a blow, a mental blow, a physical blow, dis-ease, pain, whatever it is, teach them a medicine. 
For he knew. It's a condom, y'all. It's a secondary plan. That means it's not perfect and it doesn't always work. It's not permanent. It can't heal you. For he knew that they would not walk in uprightness nor strive in righteousness. So now we look at this word mastiza and it says, well, well, well what happened is saying mastiza here, saying Satan, Sataniel here. The word apparently, this is in the footnotes of Jubilee, mastim. In the hephal, part of Satan to be adverse, inimical, the Hebrew now mastima, animosity, animosity. In Hosea 7 and 8, thus the word equals Satan as adversary. It's another word for it. As a proper name, it is practically confined to the Jubilee's literature. The evil spirits under the guidance of mastima tempt, accused to destroy men, thus Satan and Mestiza, Mestima are identical. So they're saying that Mestima is most likely the proper, the, um, the proper, the proper name. Satan is the title. Okay, I'm in Jubilees 10 and 11. And we did according to all his words, all the malignant evil ones, we bound in the place of combination, condemnation. And the tenth part of them was left that they might be subject before Satan. So you can see it's going on the earth. And we explain to know all the medicines of their diseases. Um, that we might be subject before Satan on the earth. And we explain to know all the medicines of their diseases. That's the blow. Together with their seductions that is the misleading astray in their teaching them not to be blind that's the blindness to seduce them not to see clearly what is right to do and to do what is wrong is to be in darkness to be blind to seduce them that is the seduction how he might heal them with herbs of the earth and noah wrote that now how do you distinguish the herbs of noah versus the roots and the herbs that the witches had, they don't know the difference. They do not know the difference. And I've said, I'll give you some wisdom from y'all for all y'all that, that, cause we're not against drinking the tea. If you can't drink it on a daily basis without a side effect, then you shouldn't be taking it. Whatever it is, it could go in your food and in your daily drink. That's what I'm saying. And Noah wrote down all the things in the book as we instructed him concerning every kind of medicine. Thus, the evil spirits were precluded from hurting the sons of men. They weren't stopped from influencing you, though. Right. And he gave all that he had written to Shem, his eldest son, for he loved him exceedingly above all his sons. And Noah slept with his fathers and was buried on Mount Lubar in the land of Ararat. That would be Turkey, northern Turkey. 950 years he completed in his life, 19 jubilees on uh, two weeks and five years. And in his life on the earth, he excelled the children of men, save Enoch because of the righteousness wherein he was perfect. For Enoch's office was ordained for a testimony to the generations of the world, so that he should recount all the deeds of generations unto generations to the day of judgment. I'm in jubilees 15, 29. For the command is ordained for a covenant that they should observe it forever among all the children of Israel. That is his law that we received in Sinai. For Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau, Yahweh did not cause to approach him. And he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, because he chose Israel to be his people. He sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For they are many nations and many peoples. For there are many nations and many peoples. And all are his. And over all has he placed spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. Now, why would he do that? We explained that, that it was already evil in them. Right? But over Israel, he did not appoint any angel or spirit. For he alone is their ruler. 
and he will preserve them and require them at the hand of his angels and his spirits and at the hand of all his powers in order that he may preserve them and bless them. So they are the good watches were supposed to be watching over us. The problem is, is that they're still rebelling. And the problem is, is that we're still worshiping demons. We're still worshiping aliens. And we're still worshiping evil spirits. That's behaving like familiar spirit and worshiping the dead. And we do not know better because we don't know Yah's law. And that they may, that, that they may be his and he may be theirs from henceforth forever. I'm in Jubilee 19 and one. And all the blessings where Yahweh has blessed me and my seed shall belong to Jacob and his seed always. And in his seed shall my name be blessed and the name of my father, Shem and Noab and Enoch and Mahalaleo and Enosh and Seth and Adam. And these shall serve to lay the foundations of the heaven and to strengthen the earth and to renew all the luminaries which are in the firmament. How are we going to renew that? So remember I told you that when he says in the host of heaven to fall, well, how about that we was already um, chosen to replace the host of heaven that fell with, with um, Satan the first time before the fall. He knew that. And he called Jacob before the eyes of Rebekah and his mother and kissed him and blessed him and said, Jacob, my beloved son, whom my soul loveth, may Elohim bless thee from above the firmament and may he give thee all the blessings wherewith he blessed Adam and Enoch and Noah and Shem and all the things of which he told me and all the things which he promised to give me. May he cause to cleave to thee and to thy seed forever according to the days of heaven above the earth. And the spirits of Mestizah shall not rule over thee or over thy seed to turn thee from Yahweh, who is thy Elohim from henceforth forever. And may Yahweh Elohim be a father to thee and thou the firstborn son and the people go away. Go in peace, my son, that they both went forth together from Abraham. And Rebekah loved Jacob with all her heart and with all her soul, very much before more than Esau. But Isaac loved Esau much more than Jacob. I'm in Jubilee 22, just giving the testimonies of these spirits. It's the same testimony. So when we get to the New Testament, it's only summing down what was already written about what the war is against and the devices and what they have done to the earth and what they're doing to us. It is through disease. It is through mental manipulation, right? It is through hypnosis. It is through um, the power of suggestion. It is through speech. It is through... Um, um, opening your gates and revealing to you knowledge through the five senses, one way or another, information, knowledge, and it's through medication. Jubilees 22 and one. And do thou, my son Jacob, remember my words and observe the commandments of Abraham, thy father. Separate thyself from the nations and eat not with them. That's where they got it from. That was part of the law. Eat not with them. And do not according to their works and become not their associates. Do not become friends with them. We still got to deal in the world, but you know what I'm saying. For their works are unclean and all their ways are pollution and an abomination and uncleanliness. Torah has separated us from the nations. Everything in Torah was to separate us from unclean works, ways that would pollute us, abominate us, and cause us uncleanliness. They offer their sacrifices to the dead, and they worship evil spirits. Whether they know it or not, it is not all voodoo and witchcraft. It is everything that they worship. And they eat over the graves and all their works are vanity and nothingness. They have no heart to understand. They are in darkness and their eyes do not see what their works are. They don't understand what they are doing because they are possessed and blind. And how they err in saying to a piece of wood, thou art my Elohim, to a stone, Thou art my master, and thou art my deliverer, and they have no heart. 
These things have, they have no soul, basically. And as for thee, my son Jacob, may the most high El help thee and the Elohim of heaven bless thee and remove thee from their uncleanliness and from their error. Hallelujah. That is part two of the armor of Yah Yahushua. I'm going to continue on the next going down Ephesians. What is the armor that we're supposed to put on to fight these so-called schemes that is devices that what are set to watch us and know us before we know ourselves. Second Corinthians 10 and four, our weapons for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds. Even the physical robe is still carnal. And I'm going to prove to you that the breastplate, the white linen garb, the stones, the ephod, all of that is within. The turban, the covering of the head, that's what is all of that at the end of the day. So we still got to put on clothes, let us dress righteously. But the clothes is not what you think. It's not a stone, y'all. It's not an actual breastplate. It is a priestly robe. It's the one to prepare a bride to be pure white without spot or blemish that she can enter into the chamber and birth salvation. That's the weapon. Because he is the one that we have to put on and be great and mighty in. Yah Yahushua. All right. Join me for part three. I'm going to